This is No One Left Behind by Cosmic Ace. Chapter 4. This is my family. It is little and broken, but still good. Summary. Hitoshi has people that love him now, and Izuku and him are adorable. Izuku didn't move from Hitoshi's side, even once while he slept. Mama and Dad asked what he knew about Hitoshi's house, which wasn't much. He knew Toshi was in the foster system, and his foster siblings weren't the nicest, but that was it. He wished she knew more. Hitoshi woke up a couple hours later. Izuku blinked at him as his friend groggily sat up. He called for his parents, and made sure Hitoshi knew he was there for him. Hitoshi leaned into Izuku, though he was still in the middle of Mount Blankets. Izuku's parents were there almost instantly. One helped unwrap a few layers from Hitoshi, while the other went to get hot chocolate. Izuku waited until they were both back to ask his friend anything. You okay now, Toshi? His friend nodded, eyeing Izuku's parents. He had met them before, but Izuku knew he was wary of adults. He also didn't like sharing his quirk. You can talk to them, Izuku whispered so only Hitoshi could hear. They won't hurt you, I pinky promise. Hitoshi glanced over at Izuku's parents again, before nodding. Izuku smiled and sent a thumbs up to his parents. Hey there, little guy. You feeling better now? Dad said, kneeling on the floor. Hitoshi nodded again. That's good. Do you know why you were out in the park? He hesitated, but Izuku nudged him to tell him it was okay. Hitoshi started speaking, though it was almost too quiet to hear. Foster brother was being mean, told to stop. I talked in the house, not allow allowed to. J chased me out outside. Said door was um door was locked. No let me in. The living room was quiet as Hitoshi finished talking. Izuku wrapped him in a tight hug, doing what he did best to comfort his friend. The two of them missed the looks of fiery anger and cold calculation sent between the two adults. Shinso, sweetie, does this happen a lot? Mama asked. N not much. Only when, only when talk. They don't let you speak in the house? Izuku hugged his friend tighter. Hitoshi burrowed deeper into the blankets, but squeaked out a yes. When Izuku looked up, he blinked in confusion. He had never seen his mom angry. When he saw her glaring at the ground, with a mini tornado of small objects spinning around her, to say he was surprised would be an understatement. Even his dad was leaning away from her, and he was the one who could breathe fire. Mama? Izuku drew her attention. The dangerous mobile of objects slowly went back to their places. Can we keep him? Can we keep him? Yeah, Izuku chirped, still hugging Hitoshi. I'm not gonna let him go back. Can he stay here, please? Please, 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 please? Izuku, he's not a stray cat, Dad said, though it sounded like he was trying not to laugh. But I don't want him to leave. Can we please, please keep him? Izuku turned on his puppy eyes. He knew his parents were weak to it. He was five and had learned how to weaponize his cuteness by now. Toshi wasn't going anywhere if he could help it. Well, he's not going back, Mama stated hesitantly, the anger gone now. But... We know how bad the foster system can be, Dad said softly. It was the meekest Izuku had ever heard him, especially those with dangerous quirks. So, can Toshi stay? The small matching grins were all the confirmation he needed. Izuku smiled so bright, the room might as well have had a new star in it. Before he knew it, Hitoshi was wiggling out of the blankets and was clinging to Izuku. He heard his parents laughing behind the two of them. You two will have to share a room, though. Izuku just giggled. He would gladly share a room if it meant Toshi could stay. Shinso slept in Izuku's bed until they could get him his own. Neither seemed upset by this arrangement, and if anything, the two of them slept better than before. Shinso almost fit into Izuku's clothes, too, so he had nice pajamas to sleep in. The next morning was odd for all of them, but it was strangely nice. Izuku and Shinso stumbled down into the kitchen, both with one arm draped over the other person. Inko sipped her coffee with a small grin. Her husband was still asleep, but that wasn't unusual for a weekend. He would wake up once he smelled the coffee. 
That or the two boys would go jump on the bed until he got up. Inko helped get the two kindergartners a bowl of cereal before they spilled the milk. She went ahead and poured one for Hisashi since she could hear him coming down the hall. He slumped over the kitchen table for a minute before beginning to drink his coffee. He had stayed up late again, which was why he had slept in. How do you two feel about going to the store today? She asked cheerfully. Store, store, I want to go, Izuku cheered. He had always taken after her early bird tendencies. Toshi getting clothes? Yes, we're going to get Shinso some new clothes and look at beds for him. We'll leave as soon as you two get dressed. Izuku practically buzzed out of his seat and raced off to his room. Shinso followed, albeit slower. Poor thing looked like he never slept. Could be insomnia, she mused. Though it didn't usually show up in children so young, it was still a possibility. Maybe this was the kid that took after Hisashi more than her. The thought made her smile again. They left a few minutes later. Once Inko made sure the clothes Shinso would be wearing weren't too big. Hisashi was staying to work on getting an engineering job in the city, or at least nearby. She was already a lawyer, but having the extra income would be good for their family. Maybe they could finally move to an actual house, especially now that they had Shinso. A yard would be nice for them too, though maybe not in the same neighborhood as the Bakugos. The trip to the store was uneventful. Inko was honestly a bit surprised at how well behaved the two were being. They both held one of her hands as they walked through the automatic doors. Once inside, she let them walk within her eyesight, though. Their first stop was to get sheets for Shinso's new bed, which would be the same size as Izuku's, and then decorations. He needed at least a few things to make his side of the room his own. She was just lucky Izuku didn't have enough hero merchandise to make it too hard yet. Maybe a poster of a hero would be good? Izuku pulled the two of them to look at something every few minutes. Shinso followed after him closely, which Inko found adorable. He didn't pull her to look at anything himself, but he always seemed interested in what Izuku spotted. That ranged from books to an interesting plastic plant. They did eventually reach where they needed to be. Inko let them wander the aisle while she watched. She wondered what color Shinso liked. A tug on her shirt brought her attention to her son, the green one. Mama, can Toshi get space sheets? Sure, sweetie, did he find one he likes? Uh Uh-huh. Izuku grabbed her arm and pulled her down the aisle. Come on, want to show you. Inko chuckled and let herself be tugged to where Shinso was standing. A set of purple and blue sheets were cradled in his little arms. They looked like they were galaxy print, which Inko found fitting considering his hair and his eyes were purple. It was a decent price, too. Is that the one you want? Shinso nodded, holding the package out to her. She put it in their cart and led the two of them to the decoration aisles. Izuku almost immediately raced over to the All Might section, just as she expected. Shinso followed, actually smiling. Inko almost wanted to take out her phone and snap a picture. Whoever had hurt this adorable little boy would have hell to pay. She wasn't well known in her field for nothing. Inko grabbed a few things from the shelves and stuck them in the cart. The boys were excitedly chattering, mostly Izuku, about the different hero merchandise they saw. They made a stop in the toy aisles, where Inko distraitly stuck in matching stuffed All Might and Sir Nidai stuffies. The boys didn't ask for many toys anyway, though Izuku took the liberty of pointing out one Shinso wanted to her. A few were promptly put into their cart. Last on their list were the groceries. Izuku always loved to help pick out what they got, and it turned into a game between him and Shinso. Whoever could find the most things on Inko's list won, it was amusing to watch. Around an hour later and they were finally checking out. The two boys dutifully placed things on the checkout belt, even if they couldn't reach sometimes. Inko made sure to get the toys and things before they did, though. Soon enough, they were carrying the bags out to the car. Izuku and Shinso both insisted on carrying a bag. Inko snapped a picture of them and sent it to Hisashi. Shinso's bed would arrive in a few days. For now, they shared Izuku's, which neither seemed to mind. It was adorable, really. Inko found herself quickly growing attached to the little boy that had crashed into their lives. She had always wanted more kids. He saw she did too, so Shinso was like a blessing to them. Inko had no clue how many kids she was going to end up with a few years down the road, mostly due to Izuku. The rest of the day was spent watching movies and drinking hot chocolate. Shinso was enamored with the concept of marshmallows. Inko made a mental note to get more at the store, since they'd be out at this rate. He saw she got back a while later. The interview had gone well, and now he just needed to wait to hear back from the company. He gasped when he saw the kids watching Disney movies and raced off to change into comfy clothes. 
Inka walked back in five minutes later to see him curled up on the couch under a blanket with one kid on each side. She snapped another picture and joined in too. Shinso's favorite turned out to be the hunchback of Notre Dame. The two boys jumped around singing the songs and hid under the blanket with Hisashi at the scary parts. Inka watched it all with a fond smile. These were her boys, she decided. All three of them. She would protect them. And in that moment, Inka Midoriya couldn't have been happier with her little family. This was No One Left Behind, Chapter 4, by Cosmic Ace, read by Star1412. If you liked this, or if you have any ideas for other fanfics I could read, let me know in the comments, and I'll see what I can do. And also, make sure to stop by the original post by Cosmic Ace, and let them know what you thought of the story. Thanks for listening!